Welcome once again to Octane Gaming. Today we take a look at the next deck, which is a water deck, and the event is a slay event. And we've got Chaotic Killer for this week's killer skill. So we're gonna jump right in. We're gonna take a look at the ultimate form. And the ultimate form this week has got an interesting battle skill. The battle skill cleanses all debuff from Water Slayer heroes. And if there are no debuffs to cleanse, it will heal you for 8,000% of hero recovery instead. Now, this battle skill, it's not really quite straightforward because... You may think that this battle skill will be affected by, say, Toxin, but it won't. And this is why it won't be affected by Toxin. It's a two-half battle skill. It's either or either. So it's either you cleanse or you heal. It's not both. So if you're hit by Toxin, the battle skill will not heal your deck. It will cleanse your deck. But if you're not hit by any debuff, it will then heal your deck. So the battle skill will not be affected by Toxin. You might think it would be, but it won't. Because the last word of the, um, the description of battle skill said instead. So instead of cleansing, it will heal, not both. Okay, so let's move on to the passive. The passive... It will create 10, 12, sorry, 12 water power gem sixes, which is quite a number of power gem to create every three turn with a battle skill. But we haven't got much boost. The boost is only 30% attack boost, which we know attack boost is not as significant as damage boost. If this was 30% damage boost, it would be, okay, it would be far better than 30% attack boost. Um, the second passive on this ultimate form on attack it dispels all enemy buffs if there are no buff then it will delay enemy turn count by one so every five turn this passive actually kicks in so every five turns it will actually cleanse a debuff or delayed enemy turn count so on turn one when there is no enemy buffs this one will actually delay the enemy's turn count now this ultimate form i can see it being very useful for gvg in gvg this um the, the the ability to actually cleanse all debuff affecting your um your team is really really good plus you can get a heal if there's no debuff to be cleansed um, to create 12 power gem every three turns as well passively is really really good um, this one is also good delaying the enemy turn count it happens every five turns so in say a gvg fight it will happen on turn zero and then if you get through all the bosses you'll get it activating on the last the, the last the final boss so the 12 the creation of the 12 power gems is would be really really good for gvg and the cleansing as well so it's not a bad ultimate form for gvg for this event this ultimate form would have to be combined with um other decks to basically give you a deck that's really usable however i don't think much people are gonna get the water deck anyway unless you're really really lucky because we all know that the first event of the season none of us has got any coins to craft anything so it's about being lucky or having a very deep pocket so let's take a look at the master collection card the master collection card is quite good as well it creates 10 water power gem sixes and increase water slayer attack by 30 percent for one turn um, the passive, it will delay the enemy's turn count. If you haven't dispelled an enemy debuff, you'll get that on turn one as well. So if you've got quite a number of um, Master Collection cards, you can delay the enemy, enemy's turn count um, 
quite significantly. So four master collection card, one ultimate form will give you five, will give you a turn, um, a delay of the enemy tur turn count for five. Plus in a Slayer setting, you've got a, it's every two turns the boss hits. So five plus two would give you seven. So the boss wouldn't hit you whatsoever. But this is an immortal killer card with the turn delay and all of that. High performance unit area wouldn't be advisable to use because it will throw everything off. You will have to wait too long to be hit by the boss to get the 1200% um, attack increase. So high performance unit area wouldn't be advisable. The next one up is the ultra rare and the ultra rare cleanses all debuff from water slayer hero and if there's no debuff you'll heal instead it creates 12 water power gem sixes and it dispels counter so you've got no it's a weaken sorry so weaken affects any card that does a damage or attack boost um the next one up the next debuff that we got for this week is thorns thorn is not a debuff it's a buff so that's something you would want to dispel it does affect it doesn't kill you but it does it does work against you where it eradicates most of your health so every time you hit the boss you get hit in return this one dispels traitor traitor does almost the same thing as thorns however traitor is a debuff rather than a buff it's um, placed on your cards so each card that's got a uh, traitor will basically take damage when it actually uh, damages the boss. Um, this week's support card I really like. I think the support card, if um, things continue from here on in with support cards, I can see support cards being becoming more useful and more relevant again. Now this one, it creates 10 water gems. We've seen that and so many so many support cards for the last few months however the passive is really really beautiful beautiful creation at the start of each turn if there are at least 10 water gems on the board it increases water slay attack by 15 percent 15 percent attack isn't a lot but for a support card to actually give you an attack boost is really really good it's really significant because it's been a long time i've actually seen a support card with anything worth worthwhile even talking about and this uh, passive is worthwhile talking about it gives you a 15 percent attack increase and if there are not enough gems it significantly increases water gem drop rate significantly increases water gem drop rate doesn't mean a lot but the passive in and of itself is worthy of speaking about because it's a support card. I really, really like the support card. It's not powerful, but it's it's quite significant. Now, the main card is not too bad as well. The main card creates eight water power gem fours. Now, that's really, really significant. Creating eight water power gem fours is really, really good. It also increases water slays attack by 20 percent which is quite significant as well it's not a massive attack but the significance of this card being able to create eight water power gem fours and giving you a 20 percent attack boost is quite it's quite nice it's got a passive on attack delays all enemy turn count by one it's got a five turn cooldown but that's neither here nor there the passive is really really good as well i really like the passive so the passive along with the battle skill is really interesting really significant especially when it comes to an event card the event card for me this week and the support card for me this week is really delightful it's a welcome change and i really like those, the, these two cards they might not be the most powerful card they might not even be powerful but i really really like the fact that they're improving that's what i love now the deck for this week is not powerful on its own even though it creates such a large number of power gems. The Master Collection card, card creates 10, the, the um, Ultimate Form creates 12 and the Ultra Rare creates 12. So we, the three cards together give, gives you 
34 power gem sixes on the board which will crush and give you probably power gem nine tens or i don't think you'll go above power gem tens really i think you'll probably get power gem tens but it's really really nice that we've got cards that can almost fold the board with power gems because it's 35 power gem that fills the board they'll create 34 so it's quite quite it's really really nice now to get this deck to do really good damage you would need some really helpful cards now this card is not going to be very helpful for this week so we'll unequip that from useful cards because of the turn delay on the cards for this week supreme santa supreme santa can be a really useful card for those of us who haven't got the deck for this week um, headstrong siren is also a really useful card for those of us who haven't got the deck and the jailers will be a really useful card for this week now i would say that if you've got the current ultimate form you can use the ultimate form alongside the master collection card and the ultra rare um, a lot um along with uh say the jailers so what i would do i would use the master collection card along with the jailers frozen devastation lost kingdom guardians and watchers of wave now watchers of wave is an arcane killer card along with lost kingdom guardian and frozen devastation these three cards would be my main damage dealer now the current ultimate form if i had it would take the place of apex predator it would give me 12 power gem sixes along with the 14 power gems coming from last kingdom guardian and the 14 coming from watches of wave that would give me quite significant amount of um, power gem generation J jailers would give me the attack boost from its passive every time the enemy turn count is increased it gives you 1200 percent attack increase that combined with the fact that the ultimate form does do a turn delay is quite good as well so this combination is the one that i'll probably be running however this non-event combination or if you had the current ultimate form you could re replace it um replace apex predator with the current ultimate form and use um the wave breaker combination now wave breaker is a chaotic killer card now the benefit from the passive from egg strong siren Ed some siren will give me 1600 percent attack increase if i've got 16 or more power gem power gems on the board this one is quite simple to use it's quite straightforward no hassle no problems this one um i tried it out in legend trials it works really really well we really like it this one works well as well in legend trials and i really like this combination as well so i will be trying out those two combination however if you haven't got those ones you've got apex predator or you've got the current ultimate form you could try this combination but for those of you like myself who haven't got the current ultimate form you can go for a non-event combination like this now this is a noble killer combination using supreme santa which with its battle skill will increase noble killer's attack by 200 percent plus an additional 10 percent for every 20 noble killer intensity we won't be generating a lot of intensity so we won't focus too much on the the increase that we'll get from the intensity however what we'll try to do is multiply that 200 percent by 10 so if you've got eight or more water power gem ones are higher on the board this is times 10 so the 200 will be increased 10 times so that will give us two thousand percent attack increase which will increase the damage output of my bloody mary combat ready crew and my phantom unseen now phantom unseen does create a full board of power gem if you've got three bloody mary speaks now i'm only running one bloody mary and one phantom unseen but i will get three bloody mary speaks with this relic now this relic what it does the phantom unseen will speak bloody mary twice when when you use when when you use this relic in a battle so this relic cause causes um phantom unseen to give us two bloody mary 
speaks why Bloody Mary speaks once. So we get three. So each time we act, we go through the activation sequence, Bloody Mary will speak three times. One other thing that you want to do with this activation, you would probably want to put Supreme Santa probably towards the end or in the middle because you need eight or more power gems on the board. So you don't want to activate it first when you haven't got a lot of power gems on the board. So that's something you would want to do. I activate from right to left. If you activate from left to right, just put Secret Santa at the far end of your activation sequence and that will do quite fine. So here I've got my Secret Santa, my Supreme Santa, I've got my Jailers and I've got my Headstrong Siren. The three useful cards I've got for you today. So those are three possible deck combination that you could use. There might be a few more deck combinations that you can use if you've got the current deck. Should you go deep for the current deck? Personally for me, I'm not going to go deep for the for the um for the current deck. I'm just um playing from a free to play perspective. So what I'm doing, I'm using my gems as wisely as possible. I'm saving, I'm saving up my coins. I'm not going to use my coins to get a deck that I don't believe that I really need or a deck that I don't think is really useful. For example, the last event, I could, could have crafted the fire deck, but I didn't. What I done was went for the water commander deck for last season. So I use all my coins to get the water the water commander deck because I think the water commander deck was more useful than the fire deck. So that's what I did. And this season, I'm gonna save my coins and the deck that I find most useful is the one that I probably craft. This deck creates quite a number of power gems, so it can be very useful later on in the year probably for a commander event or a water event because of the number of power gems it actually create. So it probably would be the one that I craft at the end of the season. Don't know as yet because there probably will be um, a far more useful deck that we'll get because the season is just start. It's quite young. So I've got 3000 gems remaining. I could go up to tier four of the pack, but I'm not going to do that for the simple reason I'll only get three more coins. Rather, I'll use the 3,000 gems to go through the three additional packs that will come out over the course of the event. So we'll get one retro pack tomorrow, one on Friday, one on Saturday. I'll go for those three. I'll get an additional 18 coins with 3,000 gems rather than three coins for 2,500 gems. So that's my thinking. That's how I'm using my um, gems, using them as wisely as possible. I'm trying to play the events um, a bit more now so I can actually accumulate far more gems as well. Because as I said, I'm no longer VIP. I'm not spending on the game. I'm trying to be totally free to play. So I'm, I have to spend my gems quite wisely. And I have to use the decks that I've got to get what I need. So um, unless I get something from the vault i'll probably be showcasing mostly non-event decks from here on in so those are my free non-event combinations you've got one other card that can be quite useful as well it's a slayer card and it's a older immortal killer ultimate form it's this one dreamers of destiny it's quite old this one came out in 2019 doesn't create a lot of power gem is not really that useful but it is something that you could use to get the killer skill if you haven't got any other choice all right so i would say tomorrow you could go into the legend trials not legend trials the proving ground store could go in the proving drawn store when it reopens and you could go for the ultra rare 
four four eight strong sirens if you haven't got that one or you could go for consecrated wizardess which is the ultra rare from the jailers you can get one of those one out of those two those two can be really useful however supreme santa you won't be able to get supreme santa all right so hopefully the information helps you out if it does leave a thumbs up on the video um, if you've got a question leave it in the comment section below if you've got a comment leave it in the comment section comment section below so until the next video this is i saying like subscribe peace and have a good day bye for now